Hi friends and fellow woodturners, Richard Ford here coming to you from Nova Scotia and I want to introduce uh, the first video that I ever made and posted on YouTube. made this video in February 2011 and um, I had the radio playing in my workshop when I made it and that created some uh, copyright problems for me. Uh, so I had to take it down off of YouTube. Um, and the video was about these little mops that uh, I was showing you how I made the mops and how I made the uh, the washers and the shaft to hold it in the lathe. Well, I've continued to make these kinds of mops over the last six years and they're very successful. They work very well. So uh, I thought I should reintroduce the video because I'm sure there's a number of people could benefit uh, from making these mops. So let's get on and watch the video. I have a number of videos uh, that I had the same problem and I'm going to be working at uh, repairing the audio on them and reposting them so hopefully over the next little while um, I should uh, get all my videos back up. I have some new ones too um, that I've just made recently and some uh, that are quite uh, interesting I think so uh, keep your eye open. Uh, I'll be coming back online and posting my videos. Uh, we'll see you then. So let's get on and watch this little video on making the mops now. Safety. It's a big thing in the workshop. If you don't feel safe doing something or you just don't feel comfortable, don't do it. You're the only person who can keep you safe. And if you don't do it, no one else can. Hi friends. Um, we're going to make a stub shaft for our buffing mop and uh, it's made from two components uh, one piece of uh, one inch by four and a half inch hot rolled uh, mild steel we'll just face off the end and put a chamfer on it for the weld gonna shoot for about a quarter of an inch chamfer here at 45 degrees the other piece is a commercially available MT2 stub shaft. It is hardened on the MT2 end with a 3 8 uh, national course tapped hole for a drawbar. So there's the piece of hot roll. And now this is the stub shaft, the commercial stub shaft, MT2 stub shaft. And uh, We'll just face off uh, the end and we'll put a similar chamfer on this piece. Same thing again, we'll aim for a quarter inch. Yeah, already. Now we just have to clamp those in a straight line on a little piece of angle iron and uh, weld them. Now a friend of mine welded these and here it is back in the lathe again. Notice the tail stock has been brought up to make sure it doesn't come out of the MT2 there uh, because I can't get a piece of threaded rod through the sleeves. So I've kind of uh, blended uh, that surface to maintain as maximum diameter I can where it's welded uh, and to clean up the rest of the shaft because we want it to run true when we're buffing we want it to be in balance uh, now we'll drill a little hole in the end and we're going to put a 3 8 uh, tapped hole in the end of this shaft for our mop to screw on first we're putting a well, we started with a center drill, and now we've got a pilot drill we're putting in. Oh, lots of coolant, keep it cool. Just checking there with the tap to make sure we have a, a hole deep enough. Uh, it's good to have some clearance at the bottom of the hole for the chips from tapping, somewhere for them to go. So 
and we'll put the tapping tapping drill in. We'll put a little countersink in and we'll just chamfer that hole. Now I'm putting a dead center in the tailstock and uh, that will help us start the tap square. Uh, there's a little uh, dimple in the uh, top of the tap and uh, we'll use that with the dead center to start the tap square. We'll just have to lock the uh, headstock there and get the tap started square and after it's well started uh, it should be fine. It will, it will stay uh, and go down the center of the hole. It's a machine tap so I don't have to back it off as much. It will push the chip down down to the front of the tap and the chips will be in the hole. Now we'll just face it off. Uh, nothing really holding this in the Morse taper. We'll put a little uh, undercut in the center so that uh, the mop actually uh, rests against the outside edge of that. And a little chamfer on the corner. Yeah. Oops, I was lucky there. A little bit of chatter in the chamfer there, and it just loosened up the, the Morse taper. So there we have a stub shaft finished. Let's take that sleeve off. There it is. Now I'll probably uh, paint this end. Here, yeah. Not the Morse taper end though. There's the 3 8 tapped hole. And when you put it in your wood lathe in the Morse taper in the headstock, uh, you need a piece of uh, threaded rod uh, to go through the headstock. Uh, probably about two inches it should protrude on the far side, on the back side. And on that you put a washer and a nut and you pull that into the headstock. Uh, that's a drawbar so that it doesn't vibrate loose as you just saw it can vibrate loose. Now when you come to take it out you just loosen the nut a couple of turns and give it a tap on the end of the rod and that will loosen the Morse taper then you take the rod out and out it comes. So we now have a stub shaft to uh, mount our mop on. Um, Now we'll make uh, a little cup center, that um, little cup washer I should say, to uh, bolt the mop material to. And when we do, you see it's recessed in the middle, it's down about 3 eighths of an inch. It will pull the material in so that the head of the bolt will be below the surface of the material. Uh, There's a little bit of 2 inch diameter by 5 8 thick uh, hot rolled steel and we'll just face it off. Once we get it cleaned up we'll start uh, putting that 3 8 deep uh, recess in the center. There we are, down to depth. So that's going to leave us about a quarter inch thick wall in that washer on the back side. Now we've drilled a clearance hole through it and we'll just clean it up a little piece of emery cloth here. Take any sharp edges off because we don't want it to cut the uh, mop material. Now I have a little uh, mandrel here with a tapped hole in the center. Well, it's running fairly true. 
we can uh, reverse the uh, cup washer and uh, machine the back side and the outside. Now I can only machine down as far as the head of the bolt, which is machined down a little bit anyway. Uh, so it's going to leave a little ridge inside, but we'll, we'll fix that, no problem. Yeah, you just put a little chamfer on it. And we're all, well, you just clean off the edges with the emery. And there. And there's a little ridge that I mentioned. We'll you know, put a chamfer in there and uh, just take a countersink in the drill press. And what I will do uh, is. Um, identify each one with uh, I'll put uh, in the set of three I'll put one groove in one of them just file a little groove in the corner and uh, two grooves in the next one and then three grooves in the last one so that uh, if you can't tell by looking at the mop then you can always have to tell which which mop it is like the first one for Tripoli and then white diamond and uh, Canuba wax there we have uh, some, some that have been painted and you can see the little grooves I was just talking about so it's easy to identify which mop is which now when it's assembled together with the mop material with the buffing mop material it will the bolt that goes through it will thread into the end of the uh, stub shaft to hold the mop away from your headstock of your lathe so that if you have a bowl or something like that you can easily uh, move it around the mop. Here's one now finished that's, that's painted and uh, there's a little cups, uh, recess cup center. Um, washer I should say I guess, recess washer. Now we're going to fold up the material here. Now this is flannelette and I have a little piece of plywood here that is 10 inches one way and 6 inches the other so it would make two size mops. This I've, I've torn the material in the 10 inch wide strips so this will make a, a 10 inch or just under 10 inch uh, size mop and uh, there's a couple of grooves in, the, in it. One is for the um, 6 inch uh, mop and one is for the 10 inch mop and uh, we'll wrap the material around these and then put the bolt through to hold it together and when we come to take it out that's what the slot will, will be there for. It'll let the, let the bolt uh, come out uh, while it's still through the material. So um, the two dark lines along the edges there are for the edges that you would use if you wrap the material um, whether you're making 10 inch or 6 inch so that's about 5 inches from there to there and that's about 6 inches or 3 inches rather in there for the 6 inch one yeah just on 3 inches look okay. There we've got about five inches. So we'll, we'll wrap the material around and we're looking for sort of 25 or 30 wraps here uh, around the board uh, to make a nice thick mop. And uh, If you wanted a thicker one, you put more wraps. If you wanted a thinner one, then you'd put less wraps. And it depends on how thick your material is, too. Now, this flannelet came from uh, some old bed sheets. So it's uh, probably not the thickest. Yeah, we'll just keep wrapping them around. And um, on the last wrap of each one, 
if there's a uh, odd piece sticking out from the end we'll trim that off because we don't want it being in the middle of the mop yeah we'll just keep wrapping them around and we'll trim off that little edge there keep the edges square Yeah, and we've got a little piece to trim off there. And we ended up about 29 wraps on this one. So it's very thin material, but 29 wraps will give us quite a nice plush mop. Now we just need to mark the center. Just go corner to corner. And we're just going to punch a hole through with a center punch. I have a block of wood with a hole in it uh, for the punch to go down in. Here's a center punch. And the uh, trick here is to position it so that uh, the hole is over the hole or the center is over the hole. And we'll just drive the center punch down through the material. I prefer to do it this way than uh, punch or cut out the material. Because all we do is sort of displace the uh, threads in the center there. When we put the bolt down through, it will be very uh, snug on the bolt. So we can just screw the bolt through that hole now, thread it uh, through the hole. I remember we still have the uh, piece of plywood in the center there and you can see now why we need those slots there because we can still pull the board out because the bolt actually goes into one of the slots it's a little tight and uh, the bolt was in there and it out it came So we just uh, give it a little assist here to get it down through the material. Now here's the cup washer and uh, that will go on there with the cup side down towards the material. And we could have made the two sides, either 6 to 10 or any size in between there really, would work with this cup washer. Uh, could probably make larger sizes too. Um, I just haven't had the need just yet. So we'll just put a nut on the uh, top of that there, on the end of the bolt. That bolt is um, one and a half inches long. It's a 3.8 national course, one and a half inches long. So by the time we do the bolt up and there's a washer on the other side, uh, we'll have just about the right amount sticking through to uh, go into our stop shaft. Now, you want to tighten it up nice and tight, but don't strip the threads. <laughs> You can start to see now how when you tighten this up how that bolt pulls down into the material there and uh, there's sort of no way in the world are you ever going to be able to reach that bolt, that head of that bolt when it's rotating uh, with a bowl or anything that you're buffing. It's, um, it's just way down below where the material is but uh, you can't, you can't uh, reach that and get down to that. So now I've, I have done them on the uh, the stub shaft that we just made, but I have a big one in the lathe at the moment, so uh, we'll use that. Yeah. 
Now that was material that I ripped 10 inches wide and then we wrapped it around a board that was 10 inches wide. So we should be able to get uh, close to 10 inches diameter. Now it really helps to have a good sharp pair of scissors for doing this job. This just turns it into sheets, individual sheets. Uh, so that uh, centrifugal force will be able to make them go out flat. This is more of a, like a traditional mop and it was one of the early ones I made where I stitched around through it. It's a very thick material. It's, it's like a, a drop cloth for painting or a thicker cotton material. Um, and it, it, with the Beal system, if you purchase the Beal buffing system, I believe that the uh, first wheel you use with the Tripoli e is uh, this thick material. Then the next one for the white diamond is alternate layers of of the thick material and uh, the thinner material, the flannelette. And then the third one is just flannelette. So uh, the wheels get progressively uh, softer. But when you have stitching around a wheel like that, it is a much firmer wheel. It's more kind of wheel you, you'd want to use for buffing steel. So you can see how that's fluffed out even more now at their individual sheets. And um, it would be... Uh, extremely difficult to reach that bolt if, when you're buffing anything. So it's quite soft and very flexible and I find I use the flannelette for all three materials. Uh, I, I, I don't have a buffing mops with the thicker material. Now just to help balance it a little bit I'm going to cut the corners off. Again, the sharp scissors are a big help here. This is just means there's going to be less material for me to cut off with the uh, skew gouge. Boy, there's a lot of corners there. <laughs> yeah, it's starting to look a little more round now. I'll spin it up. You see the centrifugal force uh, forces those uh, sheets of flannelette to go out flat. Now I'm going to cut the edge off with the uh, a skew gouge but I have to use a special uh, tool rest. See the tool rest has a, a slot in the top there and the slot just fits my skew gouge. Um, I wouldn't uh, attempt this without uh, without that special tool rest. See how it just, just fits in there. So the skew gouge can't get pulled into the center or uh, pushed out to the outside it's locked into position if it if it wasn't in that groove it would get picked up by the uh, little pieces of the material would get wrapped into the middle very rapidly and it would throw the skew gouge towards the center and then possibly out the other side I don't know it might get completely caught and ripped out of your hand and thrown across the shop so don't do this unless you are properly equipped for it and are comfortable doing it. What I'm showing you here is the way that I do it. I'm not advocating that you do it the same way or you attempt to do this. This is just how I make buffing mops.
Now, you won't quite get a 10 inch width because it's the material has been pulled in in the center and uh, so it's not in a straight line. So we lose a little bit of the diameter. Now, your skew gouge needs to be very sharp uh, when you do this. Same as any turning operation, you need a, a sharp tool. So I'm just giving it a little touch here with the diamond file. Yeah, it's nice and sharp now. Just put a, a dust mask on because this is a pretty dust dusty uh, job and uh, some safety glasses and the uh, little bits of material get thrown everywhere in your shop. Um, I tried using my dust collector in the beginning but all the little bits of material, little bits of flannelette, all the little triangular shaped pieces that get uh, cut off um, ended up going into the fan and uh, clogging, clogging the veins in the fan. So I don't use my dust collector at the moment doing this because uh, it will just clog it up and then you've got to take it all apart to clean it. There, I adjusted it out a little bit because the centrifugal force had uh, made those sheets of flannelet uh, uh, expand out a little bit more yeah, so I just just cut it off and clean it up here now and then we'll just sort out the sheets a little bit make sure that they're all all flat there yeah, like that and now we'll just trim it to make it a little rounder and it's a little more balanced now. We can speed it up a little more. We started off we we're about uh, 1500 and, and now we're up about two and a half thousand RPM. You can see the little pieces flying everywhere. What a mess it makes of your shop. There's some of those little pieces of uh, flannelette that it's been cut off and fly around everywhere. You see the mop is very uh, soft and flexible. Of course, the, hard, the, the faster you spin it, the harder it gets. But when it's just at about uh, 900 RPM, like here, you can see that it's quite soft and flexible and... and, and wouldn't be any problem pushing your bowl against that. Now when you first start using it, you get lots of little bits of fuzzy stuff uh, flying off or coming off or sticking out. So you, you can just trim them off. Uh, there, see little, little bits like that. Just pull them off or trim them off. Eventually it will settle down. So there, there's the first mop. And uh, you can see this one actually is uh, the number one. So this would be used for Tripoli. Now you have to learn how to use uh, a buffing system like this. Uh, how to present uh, your work to it because it can be very aggressive and if you present your work to it with a, a sharp edge so that it can catch it, it will pull a piece uh, right out of your hands and throw it down on the floor or across the shop or somewhere. But I like the this soft, fle flexible type of uh, buffing mop. Uh, I prefer it to the harder ones. And <laughs> You can see there's no way that uh, you can uh, damage your, your bowl 
uh, you're not going to be able to push it in, in and touch on that on that bolt which is down in the middle there now if you uh, speed it up uh, it gets very hard just the for the centrifugal force there of uh, pushing that material out makes it uh, a much tougher uh, buffing wheel. Now here is a piece of wood, and you see how I'm presenting that uh, so that the edge is not uh, be it's not being given an edge to grab there. If you were to put that top edge in, it's going to grab it. And it, it can be very aggressive. In the beginning, there's there's going to be uh, some fluffers and stuff coming off. So you have to learn this, how to, like all the different shapes of the things you make, how to present them to the wheel. The big thing I would say is keep it down around 800, 900 RPM. That's about 1200 there. Still fairly firm. Um, but you've got to present the edge to it so that it, it can't catch it. That's the thing. Don't give it an edge to catch hold of. If you do, it, it will gladly catch it for you. See how it pulls that down? If you don't have a tight grip, uh, it's going to pull it right out of your hand. And some of the things we're buffing are quite small. You know, you can't hold it like uh, like you can hold onto that board of wood there. I'm going to let the uh, dust settle here and clean the shop up. Uh, that's it. That's the mop.